We have just completed the surrender process. Uh, Mr. Gooding has uh, been fingerprinted and photographed. Uh, in my 50 years, almost, of practicing law, I have never seen a case like this one because there is not a scintilla of criminal culpability that can be attributed to Mr. Cuba Gooding Jr. after I have extensively, with my staff, reviewed the video of almost two hours, which reflects the entire uh, event for which we're here today. Mr. Gooding has not acted inappropriately in any shape or form. Nothing in the video could even be considered ambiguous. And I frankly am shocked and horrified that this case is being prosecuted. As you may know, originally we were not sure if we were going to surrender him because I believe that after the district attorney's office reviewed the video and saw that he was not culpable of any criminal conduct, that they would decline to prosecute. However, for some reason, and we'll maybe get better insight when we get down to the court, they do plan to prosecute him, and they're charging him with one, to my knowledge it might be more, but one Class A misdemeanor of forcible touching, which never, ever happened. Uh, at this point, we're going to go to the courthouse. We're going to interpose a not guilty plea. We're going to ask for a quick return date. And we're going to see if the alleged uh, person, the person who alleges the abuse, shows up at court. I doubt she'll be there. I doubt that she'll sign an affidavit accusing him. I believe the affidavit will be signed by the police officer who was not there. All I ask of you is that you judge for yourself. Look at the video and make your own choice rather than relying on the overzealous policing in this matter. I think it's extremely unfortunate that Mr. Gooding has to go through this process, had to fly from California to New York and go through all of the dynamics of this process when in fact he did absolutely nothing wrong. And I am completely confident that he will be totally exonerated and I would not be at all surprised if at the conclusion of Mr. Gooding's proceedings a criminal charge is lodged against the lady who's alleging that she was abused and charged and that she's charged with a perjury. Uh, it's very unfortunate and we are all very sympathetic to people that are victims and are abused. But what is also extremely disturbing is when somebody who comes forward and alleges abuse was not abused and seeks to simply get their 15 minutes of fame or the connection to a celebrity as I think is the case here. And if that turns out to be the case, I'm hoping that the prosecutor will vigorously prosecute the lady who's alleged to be the, uh, the person abused here so that it'll send out a loud and clear message to other individuals not to do anything that will result in an innocent person being charged with a crime that they did not commit. What about now this morning of a woman from Butter who we'll, allegedly we'll, from we'll, Bell Bell we, we, we heard that somebody uh, sort of came out of the woodwork and alleged that there was a touching of her derriere over a decade ago, 12 years ago. Uh, I spoke to QB, he has no knowledge of it. Uh, obviously, we would have sympathy for anybody, whether it was 10 years or 20 years, that was abused in any way. But I have no uh, belief that this will go any further because there's a two-year statute of limitations and certainly a, a, a vacant event like this dating back 12 years certainly doesn't establish 
any pattern of conduct that would be relevant to the present proceedings. <coughs> what is his demeanor at this point? Right no. Mr. Mr. Gooding is very respectful of the judicial process. He has complete confidence that he will be fully uh, exonerated. He's been very cooperative, as you know, at his own expense, and not because he was under an arrest warrant. He voluntarily came back from California to New York. He's been treated very nicely since he's been back here, and uh, he's completely comfortable and confident that he will be completely adjudicated innocent of any criminal conduct. How's he feeling emotionally? He, he's a very strong individual, and he's a people person. He loves people, and he is very perplexed because the people that he usually sees when he goes to these parties and these different events are always very kind and loving. They want to get a picture of him, and he reciprocates by <coughs> kindness and uh, as he was in this particular case. So he's very troubled when somebody for no reason turns on him and makes a complaint like this. The victim alleges he was highly intoxicated. Is it possible he doesn't remember what happened? Mr. Cuba Gooding Jr. Uh, was at this facility as to how much alcohol he consumed, uh, I'm not sure, but he was accompanied by other individuals that were with him the entire time. And they corroborated that he did absolutely nothing wrong. In fact, they indicated that the particular individual who's alleged to being abused here was unfortunately stalking him and following him around. And he was polite, uh, but ultimately he, they were told to please, you know, leave them alone and give them privacy. And at that moment, that individual must have been unhappy about being rebuffed and apparently, you know, went and, and made this false complaint. Did they Can argue in the club, as, as has been alleged? That they, were they arguing inside the club? They were not arguing. There was no altercation. In fact, the security at the club uh, were present the whole time. They indicated to us that Mr. Gooding was totally appropriate. Uh, we have reviewed the video with members of that club, and they, as was I, horrified. Uh, one of the actual lawyers that reviewed it with us uh, said that he's obviously not a criminal lawyer, but even a sophomore in, in, in law school could see that there was no criminal conduct, and he himself, as were other people that uh, you know were involved, was shocked at any charges of here. So Where's Mr. Gooding right now? Mr. Gooding is uh, gonna, is in the process now of being transported down to the criminal court. He's being taken in a vehicle. Uh, we'll be uh, meeting him down there. He's in the process. He's going right now, and he's probably in transit. And then when he gets down to the court, uh, the paperwork will be processed, and probably within the next several hours, we'll be entering a not guilty plea trying to set it down for an early June date to bring closure to this. And uh, we're certainly extremely optimistic of a, of a positive result. So what do you think that the prosecutors have that you're saying you're not seeing in this video that led them to this misdemeanor charge? I, I must say that it was really very disturbing to me after my office reviewed the video that the prosecutors did not decline to prosecute. And I can... But what is their reason for prosecuting Goody? What did they tell you? You said you saw Well, they're, this they're alleging that they're relying upon a statement by this lady that he touched her and it, the charge is a forcible touching. However, when the video is fully reviewed by the prosecutor's office, we're confident that they'll see that her statement is not accurate and that the case will certainly be dismissed. So it's I believe, it's I believe, have security with him at the time? Does there was security in the club and you can rest assured security? that if there was any inappropriate conduct, the security in the club, which, who has obviously a duty 
to all of the patrons would have interjected and, and stopped that from happening. What I am concerned about uh, is that it is disappointing that this matter has not been vetted out a lot more seriously by the prosecutor's office, not because Mr. Gooding is a celebrity, but anybody, especially in these times, that's charged with something like this should have the benefit of the prosecutor's considerable evaluation before they are formally charged. But what would the prosecutor be? of the state of New York and in any jurisdiction not only represents the interests of a, of a victim, but the interest of all of the people of that state. So that in essence, the district attorney of New York County has a duty and an obligation to protect the best interests of the defendant. And when they see that nothing happened like this, they're not supposed to move forward with the case. But what would her motive be? What would her motive be? You know, we can, we can only look to the past where people attack, uh, you know, someone else with a false allegation because somehow they want to attach themselves to a celebrity, somehow they want to have their 15 minutes of fame, uh, sometimes maybe they look at a celebrity and they have a jealousy and they say, oh, I can take you down. I can only speculate, but I am horrified uh, when I see someone make a false claim. Because look at what it puts a gentleman like this through. So you're calling her a liar? I'm sorry? Well, that's always a consideration. Uh, a lot of times a person will make a claim and then follow it up with a, with a civil suit. So that could also be a possibility. But, you know, I can only speculate. I don't know why this lady did that. Was his personal security with him that night? Uh, the security that was there was the club security. And we have reviewed things with them, and they have co corroborated that Mr. Gubergini's uh, conduct was not inappropriate. And the video, do you see the victim stalking him like you described? I, you know, stalking is a, a term of art, but we do see her following him around incessantly. We even see one incident where she's basically rebuffed and said, you know, please leave us alone, let us have our privacy. Is that the part of that TMZ shows where a woman is in a black tank top and she's standing next to him and sort of like dancing? Or I, I, don't, I didn't see that. So how do you know it's the woman that you're referring to? Well, there's all, we know who the alleged uh, uh, accuser is, and we know that she was the individual in the video that was following them all over the place. Was it in the TMZ video that's been I, I didn't see the TMZ video. So you're, you're relying on the video from the club? Well, in a case like this, there's evidence. And the evidence, if you're fortunate enough, reveals what happened. Now, in this case, it's a no-brainer. The club was well endowed with videos from the moment he got there to the moment he left, and we don't need anybody to, you know, uh, contemplate or wonder what happened. We just can go to the video and see what happened, and it's black and white. Uh, it's clearly uh, a case of, I can only say, overzealous policing, and based on the video, there will be total exoneration here. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.